In the previous video, we saw that with Entity Framework Core 5, we were able to model a many-to-many -many relationship in the following way. We had a genre and movie entities, and in order to establish the many-to-many -many relationship in genre, we put a list of movies property, and in movie, we put a list of genres property. And then with this information, with this configuration, Entity Framework Core 5, was able to create the join table that represented that model, the many-to-many -many relationship. And that is fine for certain scenarios, but sometimes we will want to be able to customize that join table. We can certainly do that. For example, let's say that in that join table, I want to be able to display, to store the creation date of the record. We can do that. The first step is to create a class that will represent that join table. Let me say public class, and I will say movies genres. Then I will create four properties. I will create a genre ID property. I will also create a movie ID property. And also I have to create two navigational properties. So let me say genre and genre here, and movie here, and movie also here. And also, let me create the property that will have the creation date. Let me say date time creation date. This will have the creation date and time of the record. Now we have to make some configurations. We have to come here to the application DB context and I want to use the Fluent API to configure our join table. So for that, I will say override on model creating and in here I can use the Fluent API in the following way. I can say model builder entity and I'll work with movie. Then I will say has many because we want to configure a many to many relationship and so a movie has many genres. So I will say M genres and then with many. Why with many? Because a genre has also many movies. So I will say genre and genre dot movies so has many and with many for the many to many relationship now i'll say using entity and in here i can put my new class that i just created movies genres and in here inside of this parenthesis i have to pass the configuration of that join table i will say mg which is movies genres and here i have to say ng has one, I want to configure the relationship that my movies genres has with genre and movie. So a movies genre has a single genre. So that is why I am saying has one. Now I will say property of property prop genre has one genre with many because a genre can be related to many movies genres. And finally, I can say has foreign key property prop dot genre id i am configuring the foreign key here now the second parameter is basically the same i will do the same but for movies i will say has one prop has one movie and a movie is related to many movies genres and the foreign key is going to be movie id so prop movie id and finally, in this third parameter, I can configure the join table itself. I can say, for example, mg has key. I need to configure the composite primary key. So I will say prop new prop genre id and also prop movie id. Semicolon here. And also I can configure my creation date so that it has a default value. I will say mg dot property prop prop creation date has default value sql and i can say something like get utc date which is a function that will bring me the current date in utc and with this our configuration is done now i want to do the following i want to come down here and i want to put the db set i will say db set of movies genres because i want to be able to query directly the movies genres table 
And now let's come up here and let's do a test. I want to, first, I just want to see that the configuration is being applied. So I will say return here and I will execute this code so that we can create the tables and see what we get. So as you can see, we have movies genres here and we have this new column here, creation date, which is of type daytime2 and the default value is get UTC date. And of course, the primary key is composed of genre ID and movie ID. So we are good to go here. Now let's see that we are actually being able to retrieve that creation date. So let me come here. I will uncomment this out and I will come down below here and I will comment this out. I will put a breakpoint here and in here I will say bar movies genres equal to context movies genres dot to list and I will just run this and examine the values of this variable. So let me press F5 to run my application in debugging mode and here we are. Now I can come here and I can examine this and in creation date we have the current date and time, which means that we are indeed able to configure the joint table in Entity Framework Core 5, though there is some limitations to this. For example, in our case, we were able to say that this property that we have here was going to be completely configured through the Fluent API, but sometimes that is not going to be the case. For example, let me just say that I have here some sort of my number property which stores whatever value and let's say that i want to modify this when we are creating our relationship between movies and genres we cannot do that here because what we have here in this property is a list of genres if we come here we can see that better here in movie what we have is a list of genre and in genre we have a list of movie how do we access movies genres from these two classes? There is no way to do that. So how do we solve this problem? We can have two solutions. The first one is to not use this kind of properties in creation time. And instead of doing this, for example, I should do the following. I should say something like bar Avengers genres, for example, new movies genres. And in here, I should do the mapping. I should say something like genre ID, action dot ID, and movie ID equal to Avengers ID. This should be a list of movies genres, but you understand what I'm doing here, right? I am saying that you will have to go directly to the movies genres entity. And in here is that you will be able to say my number and you will store whatever value you want and then you will save that into the database the other solution would be to use as we used to do in entity framework core is to have a list of for example here a list of movies genres here and have this called movies genres and then pass the mapping through this property as we have done in the past but anyway, as you can see with Entity Framework Core 5, you can bypass the intermediate class when modeling many-to-many -many relationships. And if you need to modify the created joint table by using an intermediate class like we did here, you can certainly do that by making some configurations here in our own model creating. I will put the code of this example of this tutorial in the description of this video. If you like this content, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and let me know what you want me to cover next. Thanks.